What's going on everyone? This is Al from PC Tech Review 101 coming back to you with another video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget about the little guys out there. Every subscription counts and if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and I will try my best to answer any questions you have. So today I'm going to be doing my first overclocking guide to some older hardware that I came across about a week ago and I got a good deal for it so basically we're going to be using an i5 6600K along with a gigabyte Z170X gaming 5 motherboard and this will also apply for the gaming 7 motherboard too as the BIOS is uh, almost identical and the same settings would work exactly those, the same so yes, I'm sure you guys noticed that it's 2018, we're in October, and you know what? As I'm shooting this video, I just found out that the uh, Red Sox won the World Series. So that's kind of a, give you a, an idea how late this video is coming out, as this hardware came out about two and a half to three years ago. But, if you guys are anything like me, and always searching for a good bargain, and you couldn't afford this hardware years ago when it first came out and uh, you maybe you came across this at a good deal as I did on Craigslist and I got it for a really good price and just to let you guys know that this is still relevant hardware and it works just fine and you really could get a good performance especially when you overclock it to 4.5 gigahertz uh, I would really compare this to the same as i5 7600k really is no re reason to uh, you know spend the extra money I know they're already up to 8600k and all that stuff but you know if you get this for a good deal it's well worth it so without further ado let's get to it so a couple of recommendations first I would recommend you guys to go ahead and update your bias to the latest in my case I didn't get a chance to do that but the overclocking was very successful with no issues as you could see this uh, BIOS is you know over two two and a half years old but uh, it seemed to work pretty fine and very easy to overclock this also I would recommend a decent power supply if you're gonna get this kind of hardware you know don't be cheap with a power supply I would definitely recommend a minimum of 750 watt power supply and definitely rate it you know bronze or higher if you're gonna do overclocking you want some good results you definitely gotta invest in a decent power supply you should be able to get one you know for about 50 bucks no problem online or local store or whatever it is whatever your means are you know your accessibilities are so also a good water cooler you know a hundred twenty millimeter radiator CPU cooling kit will be just fine. You don't have to go for the big big boy the 240 millimeter 120 millimeter will work just fine because once you overclock this thing and you increase the voltage you, Your CPU will definitely run pretty hot and uh, a tower cooler might not just cut it And unless you have a really good one, but in this in that situation a good tower cooler costs just as much as a water cooler and I would definitely go for a nice water cooler instead so you get those components everything ready and then you should be able to overclock this thing safely no problem just one other thing when you first get into this BIOS uh, your mouse speed is very slow it starts off with the uh, one right here that's what it starts with and it's very slow and it's pain about to get across and it stutters so you know when you get in here you just change it to two and a half and that's right that's perfect so now you're ready to overclock it again it's very simple just f two steps really so you go to this MIT section here and uh, you double click advanced frequency setting and then right here under CPU clock ratio uh, this thing stock comes 3.5 and let me think 3.9 turbo or whatever but doesn't matter so you basically click over here once and type in the amount that you want to use you want to put in so in my case it's 4.5 and that's you know that's definitely a good 
good overclock we'll definitely see some performance and that's pretty much it in this section that you're done and I'm sure you guys all want to uh, you know overclock the the RAM but we're not gonna do that because I found it to be unstable or even uh, use this XMP profile uh, I'm gonna keep it disabled as uh, enabling it it's sent to have the overclock unstable and I think it's more important to have a higher CPU Core, uh, core clock then um, you know a higher DRAM frequency is not really going to make a difference for you so I recommend having this disabled as I had some issues with it being enabled it goes into Windows 10 but once I start doing some heavy uh, programs like uh, I was you know playing some games and stuff some high-end AAA titles and within like a minute or two the thing just crashes every time but so once I disabled it and put it back to stock the way it was, I had no issues anymore. So, okay, so we leave that. And we go back now. And one last thing we do is go to the advanced voltage settings. And on the CPU core voltage here, double click that. As you could see on the left, that's what it came with originally stock at 1.300. But we're going to just increase it to 1.380, which is more than enough it's not too little and it's not too much for me I thought this was a sweet spot if you don't want to go that high and test out a, lo a lower number maybe 1.350 that's up to you but for me off the bat this was just right and I had no issues so right here that's pretty much it just the two things we have to change in the BIOS and then after that we go ahead save and exit yes and if everything is fine it will go right into Windows and uh, you will not see the computer like restart or anything it'll just stay the way it is because I know sometimes when you change certain settings the computer will turn off and it'll turn back on but that that's not good so in if if you did it right you should get into Windows right away just like I did right now and let's just hit on CPU Z and you could see that it went through there it is 4.5 no problem running real smooth and I personally tested on some AAA title games and my some of my favorites that I play and I left this thing running for like an hour or two at a game and I had no issues at all uh, this with a good cooler and a good power supply with this overclock I was able to stay around 60 Celsius playing a game you know maxed out on 1080p with no issues so so that that'll do it for for this video and if you guys found this helpful in any way please don't forget to subscribe to my channel I really appreciate it and leave me any questions that you have this overclocking guy will also work for the i7 6700k in exactly the same way so if you have the the better chip this will also work for that too so thank you for watching and have a good day guys bye bye